A few months ago, the Rocket League YouTuber Rocket Sledge uploaded this video on a bot that he and a coder named Verx had created. This bot could do many different types of freestyle moves, including flip resets, air dribbles, and more. Now, after seeing this video, I was inspired to try to make one of my own, since, as you may or may not know, I'm a member of the Rocket League bot community, a community of coders who create bots for Rocket League. Now, just to be clear, I'm not trying to make a copy of the bot that Rocket Sledge and Verx created. Not even close. I do not expect my bot to be able to do any of the stuff that their bot was able to do in their video. And that's partly because I'm making my bot in a completely different way than theirs. You see, their bot does all of its fancy moves by basically copying what a human player does. So first, a freestyler gets in a lobby with the bot. The bot then watches as the freestyler executes some crazy moves. And then the bot is basically able to copy input by input and movement by movement exactly what the freestyler was able to do which is definitely impressive, but it's not at all how I'm going about it. Instead, my bot is going to be coming up with the movements all by itself. And because of that, I'm not expecting my bot to be able to do anything close to what their bot is able to do. Instead, my goal is simply for my bot to be able to execute a flip reset by the end of the video. And, well, you'll be the judge, but I'm pretty sure I did, so watch till the end. Also, all the video footage for this video was recorded from my Twitch stream, which you can check out via the link in the description or by searching code red underscore TV on Twitch. Now to the video. I'm going to attempt to try to make a bot that can do flip reset. I don't think it's ever been done before apart from that one video. I don't know if you've seen the video by Rocket Sledge, but technically flip reset setting bots have been done before, but it is not exactly what some people think. It's not like the bots actually doing all the calculations and stuff. It's basically cop so a player does it first and then the player and then the bot does its best to copy what the player did. It's not actually in of itself thinking, okay, I'm going to do a flip reset. I'm going to hit the ball here and now I'm going to fall off the ceiling and get a flip reset on the ball and shoot it in the net. It's not thinking any of that. So it's not really in that way. It, it's not, it, yeah, it's still impressive. It's just not, it's just not that. And that is what I'm going to be doing. So let's see if I can do it. I already have aerials implemented into Red Utilities, as you can see here. So I'm just going to be making another action here for flip resets. I could make it a part of the same action, but I don't think that's a good idea. I want people to be able to, if they, if I actually end up adding this to red utilities, I want it to just be kind of something else that you can mess around with if you want to want to add it. I'm gonna just copy and paste everything in here, except it's not gonna be exactly the same. It's going to actually, I think probably the best way to do this is to just inherit, change the name to flip reset and make it inherit from aerial shot. All right. So here, hmm. how are we gonna do this? Actually, we don't need to do minus, we can do plus since I made it crossing with the up direction. Just took me a while to realize that that it will work, yeah, okay. So that should, in theory, work. I'll probably have to fiddle with this number. Let's, uh, well, I guess this won't, we won't test this yet. We need to actually make a, make the bot actually do this action. All right, and then we will just, yeah, we will find the flip roof set shot. We'll check if it is valid, which is just the same way we check if an aerial shot is valid. Basically, if we can fly there in time, then we'll go for it. And then otherwise, we'll just jump. We'll just do jump shot just to make the, the car not stand still. So if all went super well, it should already work. But I doubt it will work at this stage. So I'm going to test. We're going to test with unlimited boost. I think this should work. I mean, I probably, my main worry is that it won't turn to actually get the flipper set. Now, just to be clear, this will make him get, get the flipper set. They won't use it because it doesn't know how to. Oh, let me use my controller. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. He did, in fact, aerial, which should have been a flip reset since he doesn't know how to do normal aerials. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take the ball. I'm going to... Okay. Please stop. <laughs> he scored. Of course he scored. Yeah, to me that just looked like he was Oh, okay, that was that looked like it could have been a flip reset. Yeah, okay, so the issue Well, I guess there are a couple things. One, let's go back to aerial shot and let's let's do risk weight, maybe. Enough boost and enough time and here are all weighted by 0 0.9. Basically the risk that we go that that we use to go for a shot. It's like if it's less than one, then like it's possible. It's theoretically it's possible to get there. Most likely we won't get there in time unless we execute perfect inputs. But I'm now making it so that over here for flip resets the risk weight is lower, meaning we will go for only go for things that we're pretty confident, reasonably confident we can hit. Let's see if this works. Okay, it's very clear to me now that he is not, that the issue isn't necessarily, oh wow, that's a good angle. Um, the issue is that he's not, they're not aiming in the right direction. So I should probably, oh my god, you got to be kidding. I said my shot direction, but I didn't actually implement my shot direction. Okay, that is not attempting to get one, my friend. No. Actually try to hit the flip reset. There we go. Oh, wow. That looked a lot like a flip reset. Oh, what? what? Okay, that actually did look like he was trying to go for one. It was weird, though. Oh, my God. That was totally him going for a flip reset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that one? I can't tell. I guess the next step would just to be, if he gets one, to have him immediately try to use it. All right, so what this should do now, I think, is it should directly after we should have hit, hit the ball, like immediately afterwards, we should attempt to flip. That looked like he wasn't even close in terms of his wheels. Oh my god, what the fuck? How is that on a flip reset? I mean, he, like, bounced off of it. What even happened there? Oh, okay. Dude. How was that not a flip reset? This... Yeah, this is just detecting how much boost it would take to get to, to the ball, basically. Uh, for an aerial. Um, and depending on how much boost I have, you know, that determines on whether or not I can actually do it. It also will make sure that I have enough time to actually, you know, get to the ball before before it's too late. So, yeah, the, air, the aerial shot basically will go for anything that it, it, it thinks it can hit in the air. The flip reset uses the same calculations except this risk weight variable basically makes it so that theoretically it needs to use 60% or less of its of its current boost in order for it to try to go for that shot. So it will it will it will basically make sure that the shot it's going for is easily attainable by comparison to an aerial shot. The reason why this is lower than an aerial shot is because if it was if it was higher than it would probably just barrel into the ball, like you mentioned. So it is, I guess, trying to touch it softly, but it doesn't really consider much more than that. It will just, oh, can I hit it? Uh, and I have enough time to hit it? Okay, I will go for it now. And then from there, it will just try its best to get the flip reset. As in, it will boost until it's on an intercept course with the ball. It will tilt its car so that it theoretically should get a flip reset. And then 
it no matter what, whether or not it gets a flipper set, right now I have it dodge. Which of course Ideally, it would only attempt to dodge if it gets the flip reset, but right now, uh, that's weird, which has kind of ended up with him spinning around a little bit after going for a flip reset, but it doesn't really matter because this is mostly testing. It definitely went for the flip reset there, and it definitely tried to dodge because I, I don't know, it's his own gold, because uh, I saw the dodge action being executed, but it didn't, didn't have the flip, so it didn't do anything. Yeah, I think it just needs to be more accurate. And fortunately, I don't think I have time to make it more accurate today. I'll be back maybe tomorrow. I don't know. I'm going to be resuming basically where I left off. So yesterday, I couldn't get the bot to do a flip reset, obviously. Uh, or else I wouldn't be streaming again, because I would have successfully done it. Instead, it just... Well, it got really close. It looked like it would have got one, but it didn't ever use it. And turns out that was my fault. It was not because... Well, obviously it was my fault. It was my fault in some capacity. But I thought it was because my aerial code wasn't accurate enough. And then I was thinking, oh man, I'm going to have to revamp my entire aerial code stuff. That's going to be really hard. Well, turns out... No, I don't need to do that. Uh, turns out it was just a small part of this condition here. Uh, at the very end, it had a condition that was like, or uh, if we've already jumped and we're on the ground, then we finish. Now, the reason why that's so important is because in the aerial shot code, that was there to make sure that like during an aerial, like you can see it right here, or bot.me dot is grounded and underscore jumped. If either, if both of those are true, then we will finish because... If we've already jumped, meaning we, you know, left the ground initially for our aerial, but we are somehow still on the ground, then that means something messed up. We either didn't launch correctly, or during the middle of our aerial, we landed on, like, a wall or something, and that's not good. But the problem is, you know, we do want to land on something during a flip reset. We want to land on the ball. So, by having that condition here in the flip reset code... It basically meant that any one of those tests from yesterday could have been an actual flip reset. But we wouldn't know because if it detected that it got a flip reset, instead of actually going for it, it immediately aborted because of that condition here. So 100% my fault. Uh, and hopefully with that change... We should actually see some better attempts, or not, well, we won't see better attempts, but we should see some attempts where they're actually using the dodge. Now, the, the real trick is, because I figured this out this morning, and, and as you can see, the condition's not there anymore, because I changed it. I also changed a little bit of other stuff, but I still didn't get it to successfully do a flip reset. That's what this stream is for. I got it close, though. Uh, the main thing was that it was using its dodge too late. So, this condition, instead of being... Time remaining less than zero. I'm going to change it so that we detect when we get a flip reset. Oh, but how do we detect if we get a flip reset? Well, this aerial shot condition here detected when I got a flip reset. If both of these are true, then that means we just got a flip reset. Now, of course, if we're on the ball during a frame, then we don't want to... Uh, we don't want to flip because then we'll jump off the ball. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable here. Underscore landed on ball is what we'll have. So... If, or just underscore landed on ball, will, it will be equal to this, or we've already landed on the ball. So every frame we will check if we've just landed on the ball, or we've already landed on the ball. And if either of those are true, then this variable will be true. Now, of course, we want to wait until after we've landed on the ball, so this variable is true. Uh, we've now, you know, fallen off the ball. So what we're going to do is we're going to check here. So we've landed on the ball, but I'm not on on the ball still. This should be a decent, maybe, attempt. No, you're going on the wall. Okay. <gasps> okay, that was good. That was good. He actually got the flip reset. It didn't score it. So now I guess my goal is to score it. Because that definitely, he got the flip reset. Oh my god. Okay, I just saved that as a gif. Holy crap. I mean, it didn't flick it because it was... It didn't... I guess it didn't have a good setup. I mean, it literally... 
it flipped into the ball as soon as it could have because my math makes sure of that. It flipped it because of my logic from before. Dude, it's actually kind of going for it. It's actually gotten three flip resets. Dude, just get a good setup. Yeah, set it up for yourself. Oh my god, that would make for such a good clip. Oh, oh, okay, that almost looked like he was going for an air dribble. Okay, what the fuck. Going for another touch. I could try to make it do that. Oh! Okay, that was clean. That was clean. He actually flicked that. Dude. Oh, almost. That was so close to a good one. Dude, how is that not a good one? I feel like that should have been a lot better. Um, I think that's good enough, actually. Let's go look at... Uh, I think I'm not going to be able to do much better than what I've been doing. Frankly, I've been just looking for a perfect setup. I think we've gotten the code to work just as well as I think I'm going to be able to get it to work, at least for a while. So let's look, admire our hand, admire our hand handiwork, and look at the, the gifts that we've collected. That one's pretty cool. Probably the best one I think is that third, the one that we got. That one's pretty good too, though. This one I think is the, probably the best one because it's at a weird angle too. And it does look like he flicks it. If only I could get that one at a different perspective, I think that would be a good one. Alright, well, I think mission accomplished. I have made a bot that can do a flip reset. Consistently, no. <laughs> uh, I went into this thinking it might be possible to do it consistently, but I've discovered that's just not optimal. I mean, really, think about it. If you want to be able to do a consistent flip reset, you need to do a consistent setup, right? And I, I went into this knowing I wouldn't be able to do a setup. And so the idea that I was going to be able to program my bot to do a consistent flip reset without learning, making it learn how to do consistent setup would mean it would somehow have to be like crazy precise, which you might be able to think, you might think would be possible with the bot, but at least, I mean, I don't know how to be that precise. So yeah, um, that's about it for this video. Uh, if you like the video, like, and you know, if you like the stream, I guess follow. I don't really know. I'm just rambling. I'm going to head off. See you guys later. Bye-bye.